Hey guys, let's talk about setting point values for your mastery path. So in mastery paths, um, it kind of goes on a vertical scale like this with your um, lowest number of points possible, which is usually zero at the bottom, your highest number of points possible at the top. Um, when you have a regular like pretest, it's pretty easy to do this because um, it kind of makes sense that you have like this level of minimum standard, maybe like maybe a 70 and maybe a mastery expectation level, maybe let's say it's a 90, right? And so those would be point values that would be meaningful in between the zero and the 100. And you could use those to split um, your group into three different parts. So basically you'd be saying that anybody that makes between a zero and a 70 would go down this path Anybody between a 70 and a 90 would go down this path. Anybody between a 90 and 100 would go down this path. Um, and these are the numbers that you're going to uh, be setting. And I think that uh, Canvas will kind of set one for you, but um, depending on what your assessment is, um, you may need to adjust that number. So the only thing I wanna say about that is to remind you that take into consideration um, what your scores are going to actually look like uh, on the assessment. If you have a four question assessment and students are only going to earn a 25, a 50 or a 70 or 100, or I'm sorry, 75 or 100, then, um, then where are they going to end up? You know, so the 25 and 50 kids are going to end up down here. Your 75 kids are going to end up here and your hundred kids are going to end up in this path, right? So you want to take into account what the possible scores are and think about where are those kids going to end up. All right, now it's a little bit more complicated when you do something like um, the book club discussion that we talked about or that you went through at the, earlier in this class. So, um, you know, I, I had you choose a book. And that's not a numerical thing, um, but you have to make it a numerical thing. And so what I did was I created three questions. Each question had a point value. Here they are. And I chose numbers that were just kind of far apart from one another um, is all I was going for. So again, we're going to have a zero at the bottom, but our top number of points here is going to be 130 because that's the total points possible if you answered all of them yes. Now in my instructions, I told you only answer yes for one book, right? And that's important. That's a very important part of this because by answering yes, you got all the points for one of these questions. And by answering no, you didn't get the points from the other question. That means your score was either a 20, a 40, or a 70. So if I wanna split you into groups, then I just have to pick a number between 20 and 40, like 30, and a number between 40 and 70, anything. It could be 45. It could be 65. I think I chose 60 when I did this. And what you're doing is you're forcing the people that scored a 20 to go down this path because anybody that scores between zero and 30 is going to go down this path. So I put all my divergent activities down here and you're forcing anybody who got between a 30 and a 60, the 40, you're forcing to go down this pathway. And so I put all my Percy Jackson activities here. And then I forced all the Harry Potter people to go down this path. Okay, so that's kind of how you can assign numbers, even if you're not looking at a true numerical um, quiz, you can kind of randomly assign numbers and still get the result you need. Okay, I hope that helps. And don't forget that if you have any questions when you start to try to do this on your own when you're back at campus, just go talk to your DLC and they will be happy to help you.